Hey guys, what's happening? So, I thought I'd show you this little upgrade that I'm going to do here, this MKS DLC 2.0 board upgrade. So I haven't even actually run this CNC machine yet, but I wanted to do a lot of upgrades. Um, so one of the things I did is I, I printed out or designed a little box, Infusion 360. This was, was my original box uh, that I had here for my laser cutter. Um, but it wouldn't really fit on my uh, uh, 3018 CNC. So I redesigned it to fit here. But if you're not familiar with the DLC 2.0, it's a basically an Arduino Uno and a Ramps 1.6 board integrated. So it's a 328p uh, processor, which uh, runs uh, Gerbil. Uh, when Gerbil is like a CNC software, if you're not familiar with that. But one of the things I didn't like about the system, that well, the board that came with this thing, is that I couldn't remove the drivers. The drivers are actually soldered onto the motherboard. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do was run closed loop drivers eventually. Um, plus I also had some extra TMC drivers, Trinamic drivers. I mean those might not be the best for CNC, just because of the micro-stepping. I mean if you're not familiar with that, it takes a, a 16 uh, micro-step input and converts it to a 256, or interpolates it to 256. Alright, so uh, one of the other issues I have is that this is a 24 volt system, and this is a 12 volt system, so i got to figure that out. I gotta see what this uh, spindle's outputting. You know, if it's actually doing 24 volts or 12 volts. So if it's a, if it's a 24 volt output, um, then I need to probably create some sort of a, a MOSFET, external MOSFET here. But uh, yeah, I was hoping I could reuse these uh, old. I mean, these are I've had these for a while. These 2208 drivers. So yeah, I gotta figure out this thing. See what the output is on this thing. And yeah, I just didn't really like this little little controller board. It's microscopic. You can't even see what's you plug it in real fast. You can't even see what's going on on the screen. Um, but if you're not familiar with these little screens, they're actually like little mini computers. So they call them like an offline controller. So really, it's really just a, a mini computer with its own processor. And you know, you can put your SD card in there and you can actually run like G code directly from this device without a computer. Um, yeah, I don't like, I, I'd much rather use it from like a regular full size computer, but. I have this extra TFT32, which actually MKS or MakerBase actually makes a, a CNC firmware for. So I'm going to upgrade that too. Right now I currently have the laser cutter firmware on it, but um, I'm going to put the CNC firmware on here. But yeah, this thing is just microscopic and they're kind of worthless. I, I don't know, they're not really... I mean, it's cool for moving the axis around, but that's it. But I, I probably wouldn't, you know, run a, a file from it. I'd much rather do it from a full-size computer. All right, so enough rambling. I'll get this board in here. We'll get it mounted. They're gone. Another thing I noticed about this board that came with it is that it doesn't actually have any options for uh, end stops. So I'm wondering how they're stopping that. So if I wanted to actually add end stops to this printer, I don't think I can do that. All right, so I actually have my multimeter connected to the output to the spindle, and I'm using open builds. I'm going to test the spindle. I want to see what kind of output voltage I'm getting here. So I'm going to do a, uh, a variable speed spindle at 100%. Then I want to see what the max output voltage is. And there we go. So yeah, 24 volts. All right, so that could present an issue for me because I'm going to be only putting in 12 volts to this thing. All right, so I had so. mentioned previously about a, uh, maybe possibly because this system is 12 volts, and the motor is uh, 12, 24 volt. Uh, you could actually run through like an external MOSFET. And this is actually what I use on my uh, 3D printers to control a, the heated bed. Uh, usually the MOSFETs that come on these motherboards are usually pretty tiny. And if you have to drive something big like a huge heated bed, you'd want to run an external MOSFET. So if you're not familiar with a MOSFET, um, a MOSFET is kind of like a, like a car relay. or just, It's like a relay. It's an electrical controlled switch. So I'm basically applying a really small voltage or current to activate this larger switch. So it's an electrically controlled switch. Uh, just like a car relay, but it's all solid state. There's no moving parts. Alright, so to get this thing to work with uh, 16 uh, microstepping, you have to take off this jumper right here on all three of these. X, Y, and Z. All right, the blue goes to the green. And 
and then I have to do the uh, V-Ref. So, one of the issues with gerbil is it's not, like Marlin, like the firmware that runs 3D printers, actually you can run um, UART or SPI, you can control these uh, drivers via serial, but gerbil doesn't know how to do that, so you gotta run these in legacy mode. So, I have to adjust these trim pods, the uh, current trim pods, because I want to max these out. So, you know, with, with a 3D printer, you know, you want to lower the current down as low as you can because you're not really running into resistance. You know, you're not, you're not hitting anything. You know, like with a CNC, you're actually going up and cutting metal. So I want to actually raise the current up to the max that I can. I mean, these things are actually rated, I think, 1.6 amp and a max of two, like a, like a momentary, like max of two. And these uh, steppers, these 42, uh, or 48 millimeter, I think they're called 42 steppers, but they're actually rated at 1.4 amp. So I'm going to set the uh, current V-Ref to 1.2 volt, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so to set the V-Ref, I have one side on the ground on my multimeter, and that this little round, this third one right here, away, first away from the potentiometer, or called pot, is the one we're actually going to adjust here. So I'm going to put that lead on there, around the front in there like that, lock it down. I'm going to fire up the multimeter. i got to get this thing power, 12 volts. Come back. So on the big tree tech, it's actually this first one here. I had it reversed, but uh, it's not. So it's not that one first to the, to the right here. It's the one to, to the left here. So let me show. You. Right now, I'm pulling about 1.3 uh, volt, and there actually is some good reference charts online. So I'm going to turn that pot, and that would be the max this thing actually can do, and that should give the the, the driver the uh, stepper about 1.6 amp current. Whereas they actually want you to be down in the 1.2 range. And I was reading online that if you go above 1.2, you're going to disable the uh, stealth chop. But that doesn't really matter to me. It's a CNC machine. It's going to be loud anyways. You're not going to be able to hear it. So I'm going to keep on trimming that down to 1.2. I'm just going to get it to about 1.2. Um, yeah, so you wouldn't have to do this if you had obviously had Marlin. Because you could do all this in software if you had UART or... SPI enabled, so I'm going to move this one to the next pot and we'll go from there. So yeah, 1.2 on all these. Uh, I'll start off with that and uh, I mean I can always bring it up a little bit. So yeah, the max is like 1.5 to 6, but then this thing will run super hot. These will also run super hot too. Alright, so I currently have a lawnmower outside, so sorry for the background noise, but so I currently actually have the uh, the laser firmware in there, so I've already copied the uh, CNC firmware. I'm going to put it in the uh, thing here, and I'm just going to basically simply reboot this device here. And it will do a firmware update. See? Booting. Updating. So at the same time, it's updating the firmware, and it's also upgrading the... Uh, I created a, a picture and font folder inside there. So in the in the download, there's a... It has everything you need to, to upgrade this thing. And then once this is done, we're gonna try some uh, do some motor control. <clears throat> so I'm still trying to figure out the uh, spindle thing here in my head, just because the spindle is controlled by pulse width modulation, and uh, I don't know how I'm gonna accomplish that with that with the MOSFET. So I might need a PWM controller. All right, doing a reboot. All right, all right. So that blue, uh, the two blue cables, or the blue, they're actually reversed. And I think I went through that on my laser cutter. But if your device actually has two Y motors, then you need to actually have them reversed or going different directions. And that's what that's for. So it's to drive a second motor in reverse. All right. So, so first attempt, I. Uh, then go because I forgot that they uh, from the factory they don't put uh, any firmware in this thing. So a couple different ways you could download the gerbil firmware. It's an Arduino Uno, 320AP processor, and you could use the IDE to flash it that way. Or a simpler way is to go back and use the uh, the Open Builds uh, control panel here, and you want to do a flashing tool and disable the door Arduino Uno, and let's do it. And it's gonna flash it. Basically, flashing. So this is definitely a lot easier, but uh, like I said, I've done it many times with the Arduino IDE. 
I got the flashing complete and let's do a quick spindle test here. So we're going to do spindle on, variable speed, and as you can see, the MOSFET's not on, and you'll see I'm going to turn on right now. Oh, see that right there? That would be the spindle turned on, it activates that MOSFET right there. So I'm going to disable that. Just simple on, off. Alright, so I got all the access working here. And let me show you real fast. So use that control right there. And we got our X plus. One thing I noticed too, hear that noise? Hear that? It's only going in one direction. Now check this out. When I pull, I mean, I'll have to figure that out why it's making that noise, but not a deal. But yeah, that's trinamic drivers. They run on durable. Make sure the Z works, or I mean the uh, yeah, Z. Okay, works. Alright, so that's it um, for this video. If you want this box, I'll put in my uh, link down below on my Thingiverse page. But uh, yeah, cool. Having fun.